Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm excited to bring you a science fiction and fantasy wrap up. It's been a rough start to the year but I'm happy to report that the dry spell has ended and I now have a lot of really good recommendations for you all. This video includes a lot of new releases as well as some backlist favorites and I just feel like this is the turning point in the year and from here out I'm really excited for what is to come. So hopefully you stick around, let's get started. First, let's start with science fiction and I read Nofic Gloss as well as its sequel, Azure Ghost, which are two books out by Essa Hansen. These are books that I received from Orbit Books for review, and they are the first two books in a space opera trilogy. In the first book, we follow a young man who right at the beginning of the story experiences a horrific massacre, and he ends up surviving, and again, this is right at the beginning, because he is pulled away by this ragtag group of salvagers, and the story goes from there. Now, I gotta say that this story has one of the most incredible dark and memorable openings because the massacre scene is just so brutal. The characters or rather the creatures in these first chapters are just so imaginative and it really grabbed my attention as someone who loves things that get really dark. From there this moves on to what I would describe as a more classic or tropey space opera series but it did have some interesting twists and turns or world building aspects that I haven't quite seen before so I do appreciate it that the author played around with that. This is a series that I really like, but for whatever reason, I just don't completely love it. And I think it's the fact that sometimes the characters feel a little bit flat. I'm not always completely immersed in the story, but it has so many elements that I really appreciate. And the sequel, I should say, was really strong. It actually worked out a lot of the things that I struggled with in the first book, because at the beginning of the story, this boy is just a young boy. And so the first story is a bit more of a coming of age narrative. And in this later one, he is very much an adult a grown man with a grown man's mind and so I thought that this book was a little bit more mature and really picked up where the last book ended which if you've read the first book you know is a bit of a cliffhanger and so I was really eager to see where the story is going to go from here and at this point I'm just very excited to see how the trilogy is all going to end out and obviously recommend this to anyone who's looking for a new space opera series to try out. I do think this one is overall pretty solid. Speaking of space opera, I also want to talk about Stars and Bones by Gareth L. Powell, and this is a book that I received for review from Titan Books. And in this story, we follow a woman who is on a ship. She finds out that her sister has mysteriously disappeared from the ship that she was on, and so they go to investigate. They come across some ancient technology, and well, it possibly involves the stakes of the survival of humanity. And this is a book that, kind of like the other one, is very tropey. I would say that this space opera book is even more tropey. It is supposed to be the beginning of a series or some sort of long-running group of books, but in a way this one I think does kind of work as a standalone. It's quite short and easy to get into. I think it's very accessible. And I will say that I liked it for the most part. It was a really good blend of humor with still having some stakes that made the story feel important or significant and made me keep wanting to turn the pages. Perhaps not the most complex space opera I have seen. The world building was a little bit simpler than other books, but but overall, I really enjoyed it. I thought that the author brought in some really good witty banter between the main character and her ship, which is sentient, which I love. And I do think if you're a fan of the author's previous space opera series, this is definitely a great one to check out. I think that this one is perhaps even better than his first, in my humble opinion. Next up, we have Mickey Seven by Edward Ashton. And this is a really fun science fiction, almost thriller, that is set in a future where there is technology that allows certain employees to become immortal or rather disposable, depending on how you think about it. Because with this technology, certain people can agree to go and work on really dangerous jobs. And when something terrible happens, when they die, their memories are just imported into a new body and they get to pick up where they left off. Now, first off, I think that this book is a great commentary on all the ideas surrounding the fact that employers tend to see their employees as rather disposable and don't always treat them very well. And so I love that it takes that idea and puts this science fiction spin on it. And I thought it was just really well done. So this book does have a lot of humor. It's pretty light in tone, but it's not so light and jokey that it fails to deal with some of the more serious issues and themes 
themes underneath. So I thought it did a good balance because I don't always get along with really funny sci-fi books. But this one to me reminded me something like a John Scalzi book or those of you that love the We Are Bob series by Dennis E. Taylor. I think if you love those kind of stories, you will really enjoy this one. I also do want to recommend the audiobook, which is how I got to listen to my review copy because it's done through different voices and has some really good sound effects. And sometimes that can be distracting for me, but in this case, it worked really well because when they're on the radio, you get that radio sound coming through and it just, if anything, helped to clarify the sound. And for those of you that are newer to science fiction, yes, this one is super accessible. So if you want to try this one out, you can jump right in. You don't need to have read other science fiction books in order to go into this one. I think it's very easy to understand. It doesn't get too heavy into the science and instead it's much more about the characters, their adventures, and it was really fun and enjoyable. Probably one of the best science fiction releases I've read so far this year. Highly recommend and I was really pleased that it did not disappoint. It was one of my most anticipated releases and yeah, I was overall quite happy with it. Switching to some backlist science fiction, I want to talk about The Inverted World by Christopher Priest. And this is a story that is set in what appears to be a post-apocalyptic future where we are following characters that are living in the city that is called Earth. And you find out very quickly that the city itself appears to be moving and it is moving on a set of tracks. And we follow a young man who is just coming of age. He's getting to work for the guilds and gets to find out what is happening outside the city. I don't want to say too much more about it because for me a lot of what I loved about the book was the mystery of trying to find out what is actually happening. Why is the city moving? What is going on with these tracks and what are they trying to accomplish? And so I found the book to be very mysterious, very compelling. Now I'm someone who loves a coming of age narrative and so I really enjoyed in this one that you have a main protagonist who at the beginning of the story is very naive. He lives a very sheltered life and has gone through a school that is purposely limited what he is taught about the world surrounding him and then now that he is of age he gets to go and actually learn more and so we as a reader get to follow along with him as he comes of age matures and his understanding widely expands. I thought this book was so compelling and it also involves one of my favorite aspects of science fiction and that is the introduction of hard science ideas and so this book involves mathematical theory and I thought it was so fascinating. I can't say for certain how accurate that was but I thought it was super interesting when it was introduced and it's just a book that you want to pick up and explore. If you're not aware this is the same author I talked about in my mystery and thriller wrap up because he wrote The Prestige but I will say that while I loved both of these books they are very very different and I wouldn't necessarily recommend one if you like the other unless you happen to be like me and have that strange crossover of liking thrillers and science fiction but the two books are very, very different in tone and premise and setup and all of that. But I gotta say, I definitely wanna read more by this author because I'm hoping he can become a new favorite. I hadn't heard of him before this year and I'm eager to read more. So if you have read him, please give me some recommendations down below. Finally, for science fiction, I wanna talk about The Memory Police. And this is a translated story that is set on this mysterious dystopian island, I believe, where you find out that items or concepts or objects appear to disappear out of the memory of society. So at the beginning of the story, we are told from the perspective of this younger child whose mother is recounting these objects that once existed within society and everyone else has forgotten, but the mother still remembers them. So things like bells and ribbons and things like that. And as the story progresses, slowly the society or the governing body has them forget more and more things. And so they just start to forget things. And I don't want to get too far into the plot. Instead, what I want to focus on is what the story is or is not. So this story is dystopian, but it's very much a literary dystopian novel. So if you're looking for hard explanations as to why people are forgetting things and how these objects are disappearing, you're not going to get a lot of concrete answers. Instead, this is much more a story where you get to follow along the theoretical avenues of what a future like this would look like, what that would mean for society, what it means to forget and just lose memories of the past, of different things that we take for granted. I thought it was a really interesting study, but as someone who likes really hard concrete answers, I did find it a little bit dissatisfying that it was so literary and just didn't explain anything, and it's not supposed to be. 
that. So I gotta say that it was definitely a case that I appreciated this book a lot. I did like it. It definitely gave me Giver vibes, but went in a very dark, different direction. Although the Giver, I would say, is also very dark. But if you're interested in it, if you like more literary science fiction, this is definitely one to pick up. And I should say this is also one that is great to recommend to those of you that don't normally read science fiction, because in some ways it's almost more of a general fiction story, a suspense story, a literary story. And again, the science is really in the background. It just happens to be classified that way because of the dystopian setting of the novel. Now switching over to fantasy, I want to talk about The Justice of Kings by Richard Swan, which is the book that I received for review from Orbit Books. And oh my goodness, I love this. This is a story of a man who works as an investigator, a judge, a jury, an executioner. He is what they call a magistrate. So he goes around the countryside serving the king and providing his justice. Now the story is actually told from the perspective not of the man himself, but that of his clerk. So we follow the story through the lens of this younger woman and I thought that was a really good choice because this man is almost a bit unknowable. He is almost more of a figurehead and he is very mysterious and just someone who I don't think the story would have worked as well if we'd gotten the story through his lens. I actually think the story would have read a lot more flat. Instead, we get this third party perspective who I think is very likable and much more knowable and relatable as a main character. And I will admit that this book started out a little bit slow, so I was getting into it, but you know, I was going along, seeing where the story was going to go, and about halfway through, oh my goodness, I got hooked. I love the direction the story went. And from there on out, I was completely immersed in the story and which just found myself flipping the pages wanting to know what was going to happen next. Essentially we follow them as they're going around and again serving the justice and the magic in this is really interesting because he has the ability to compel people to tell him things and has certain magical abilities that assist in his work and it's told throughout the story it gets a little bit dark and brings in some elements that I don't want to spoil but I as someone who loves horror really enjoyed those aspects to the story. And I will say, and I said this on Twitter, that this book I think is perfect for those of you that love The Witcher. And I love the TV show. I struggle a little bit more with the books. They just don't work quite as well for me. But this book kind of had a similar setup where you have someone who is investigating. You have a adult male with a younger female who are the protagonists of the story. And it definitely gave me similar vibes to The Witcher. But in my opinion, I much prefer the writing in this over The Witcher. I thought the prose in this was beautiful. It is so strong and just well written. I am very eager to read more by this author and read through the later books as they come out. I really think that there's a lot of hype around this book but it's for a really good reason. You know me, I don't always like really classic fantasy and this arguably is more classic than some of the books I normally fall in love with but the more time I spend away from this book the more I find myself thinking about it. I want to reread it before my end of the year content because chances are this is definitely going to end up on my end of the year favorites. It's just a matter of where it ends up on that list and I really recommend it. I really loved it and just again want to get back to that world. And last but not least I want to talk about City of Lies by Sam Hawk and this is a piece of epic fantasy that is told primarily over two perspectives. We follow a young man who is trained as a poison taster and so he has gone through the education through working with his uncle learning how to identify different poisons, how to react to them, how to to provide the different antidotes if someone is poison and as part of his job he is required to taste certain things in order to protect the royal or higher ups in his societies. The story is also told from his sister's perspective who does not work as a taster because she actually suffers from an immune disease that makes her very compromised and so she deals a lot with her illness affecting her day-to-day -day life and I thought that that was a really interesting aspect to the story. I should also mention that the first perspective I mentioned of the young man, he appears to be neurodiverse in some way or struggles perhaps with something like an OCD tendency and so I thought that was really interesting. It's never named on the page in this fantasy world but it's very clearly shown how he struggles with these certain tendencies and how it plays into his life and I really like that because it's just not a representation I see a lot especially in fantasy 
messy. And I'm always looking for those little diverse aspects to be woven into my story. So I will say that my favorite part of this book, unsurprisingly, was the part involving the poison. Each chapter opens with a description of a different poison and how it works. And the idea of intentionally poisoning someone in order to teach them how to deal with poisons was fascinating and dark and interesting. And I loved it a lot. My complaint about the book is that you also have this subplot or what probably should be the major plot of the book where there is a city siege going on and I just didn't really care about that part of the story, which did hold me back from fully loving the book as a whole because of course there's this major aspect to the story that wasn't really grabbing my attention. There's a second book so I am tempted to check it out for myself. I'd love to know if you've read this one, if you recommend continuing on. I don't know if it's going to end up being a trilogy or not so that might determine how quickly I get back to the later books, but overall yeah I like it a lot and I think if you enjoy my taste in kind of darker fantasy this one might be up your alley as well. So that's it for this video here. I'd love to hear of the books I talked about. Which ones are you planning on checking out for yourself? And as well, I would love to hear what is the best science fiction or fantasy book you've read so far this year? Because like I said, I feel like things are turning around and the rest of the year is just gonna be a whole bunch of new favorites coming down the pipeline with lots more recommendations for you all. At least that's my plan, we'll see how it goes. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I do read a lot of adult science fiction, fantasy, as well as horror and thrillers. You can help me out by giving this video a thumbs up, sharing it around online, dropping a comment, even if it's just a little, I don't know, spaceship. And if you hit that little notification bell, you'll never miss a video from me. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.